Honestly, anyone can call them a nutritionist and that's a tea. That's the entire video, that's all you need to know. Hi guys, my name is Emily. I am currently a practicing registered dietitian and today we're gonna to talk about what the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist is. Quick disclaimer, everything I'm about to talk about is only in regards to the United States. The regulation of all of this is different in other countries. So if you're, in, if you're not living in the United States, it's gonna look a little bit differently than this. So if you've seen any type of nutrition education content online, you've probably seen the two terms in some way or another. So we're gonna to go today into three different things. We're going to the training differences between what you need to do to become a dietitian compared to being a nutritionist. We're gonna talk about the scope of practice for the two, and then we're gonna talk about how the two are regulated and potential problems that can come from the lack of regulation. We're gonna start first and foremost off with what is a registered dietitian? How do you become one? So there are a couple different paths to become a registered dietitian. The most common path to my knowledge that I am aware of is they'll complete a bachelor's degree. So that's four years of formal education at an accredited university. They'll go on to complete a supervised dietetic internship. Think of this like almost like clinicals in like the doctor world. This is when you're like in the space. You're like, you're in it, you're practicing. This is when you kind of get acclimated to the like real world experience and you're put in the role. And as of 2024, you'll be required to have a master's to sit for the registered dietitian exam. This was the path that I followed. I completed my bachelor's degree in dietetics and nutrition, fitness, and health. It was a dual major program at Purdue University. I went on to complete my dietetic internship and master's degree in nutrition and dietetics from Benedictine University. And then I sat for the RD exam after that. Overall, it's kind of like formal education, internship. It's gonna little, look a little bit funky in 2024 because you'll need some type of masters. But after that, then once you have those three, in 2024, you would sit for the registered dietitian exam. And once that person passes the exam, that final step, they can put RD or RDN after their name. It stands for registered dietitian or registered dietitian nutritionist. There is no difference between the two. It's all completely just a personal preference with the dietitian themselves of what they want to put behind their name. So then let's talk about the requirements and training to become a nutritionist. There are none. Yes, that's right. Anyone can call themselves a nutritionist. It's not a regulated term. You don't need any formal training to call yourself a nutritionist. So like whenever you're searching online, if you see like certified nutritionist, uh, nutritionalist, that's one, that one's wild. If you see like nutrition expert, registered nutritionist, whatever it is, anyone can put that. Literally anyone can put that. The term nutritionist is not regulated at all in the United States. And you might be wondering, Emily, but the RDN that some people have behind their name, it says registered dietitian nutritionist. It is important to note that it has registered dietitian in the term. That's what's regulated and that is what not anyone can just throw behind it. And when I say anyone can call themselves a nutritionist, I literally mean anyone. You can call yourself a nutritionist if you want. This, Apple can call itself a nutritionist if it had a conscience and mind. My, my Dr. Pepper can call itself a nutritionist. My baby, this is my child, Blizzard, you know his name. He can call himself a nutritionist. My Hydro Flask can call himself a nutritionist. Our capitalist king, Tom Nook can call himself a nutritionist. Anyone can call themselves a nutritionist. Just kind of be wary when you see that out in the wild. <laughs> Oof, 
So you're probably wondering, well, what can the two do then? If you're catching my vibes, or you're kind of wondering, Emily, there are so many nutritionists, what can they practice compared to like, what can dietitians practice? Registered dietitians have years of education. Something I did forget to mention with dietitians is every five years we're required to complete a certain amount, certain amount of continuing education. So we're constantly learning. The main thing registers dietitians work with is medical nutrition therapy. Well, medical nutrition therapy is probably what you think of maybe with a dietitian job, like working in a hospital setting or with different, or an outpatient setting where we work with gastrointestinal disorders, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, eating disorders, oncology, renal disease, stuff like that. Medical nutrition therapy is the main component that dietitians can practice that is protected. And you're probably like, Emily, why, why do you care about the scope of practice? Like, why can't just everyone teach nutrition if they have whatever qualifications or experience? And it comes down to safety and patient care because in many instances, you can look up, there's a vast history of just wellness and health influencers online giving out nutrition advice that have led to years of continued harm and long-term effects, long-term negative effects on people. This formal nutrition education and experience that we go through helps us provide the best individualized care for the client or the patient. We wanna make sure their safety is always at the forefront of our mind whenever we're talking to them. And we also have to make sure it's individualized and it's not just this food is good for you, this good food is bad for you, here's a meal plan, eat these specific things to cure your disease. It's not as simple as that. And kind of thinking that way and educating that way can be very harmful. It can create that black or white thinking. It promotes food morality, which food does not hold morality. There is no good or bad food. It's just neutral. It can be essentially just really harmful for the patient or the client if they're putting their trust in someone who might not be educated on, let's say like, what can increase someone's risk of an eating disorder. That, especially that component of it is why I'm so passionate about who is being, who the educator is and what the intentions are. So the last part of this is how are these terms regulated? And I've kind of gone a little bit into this already. Go back to it, RDN, RDN, that's what you look for when you know for sure they're a dietitian, stands for registered dietitian or registered dietitian nutritionist. This is regulated by the Commission of Dietetic Registration Organization. If you see RD, RDN, behind someone's name, that's a protected title. Essentially, like someone can't just throw that behind their name. Like imagine if someone just threw like MD or DO behind their name and pretended to be a doctor, that would not be okay and would be fraud, which you can't do that. The term nutritionist is not regulated. Like I said, anyone can call themselves a nutritionist. There are like different programs I know with like, there are like four week certificates. I've seen like a year certificate. There are all these different variations of like nutrition coach, health coach, nutrition expert, nutritionist, certified nutritionist, all these different titles and there isn't one overarching criteria that kind of establishes them all from different from something else. Just in the US, like I said, it's different in different countries. I'm aware of this. I don't know every country's regulation. If you see the word nutritionist, just be skeptical because it doesn't really mean anything, really. So the potential harms, like we talked about like patient care, patient safety, why is this so important? Just to kind of sum it all up, why it's important to get your facts and information from a dietitian when it comes to nutrition advice is because if you're not, there's the risk of spread of misinformation, nutrition misinformation. There's the risk and very high chance of promotion of disordered eating. There's potentially increased disease risk with improper management of a chronic condition. Potentially and very likely fear tactics are being utilized. 
that's something I can't speak for all dietitians. There's a lot of us, but fear tactics tends to be one of the best ways that the internet loves. They just, you love to see like extreme, definitive, confident statements. And especially when it's like, the government doesn't want you to do this, or the science is saying this, or they don't want you to know this. Fear tactics work very well. Fear mongering sells incredibly well. It does very well online. It does very well with promotional content. That's something that a lot of dietitians do not do. The last piece of it is why I stress seeking out someone with adequate education is they're properly trained from a counseling standpoint. Counseling is a huge part of what dietitians do. We're constantly talking to people, whether it's individual, group, just like also the way you interact with people, the verbiage you use. It's very important. It can send very different messages with how you relate your words. So essentially overall, I just kind of want to go over the differences because the more you know, the more skeptical you can be about the information online. There's a lot of nutrition information out there. There's a lot of nutrition misinformation out there. It's nice to kind of go into it when you hear something or see a claim, kind of be like, what is this person's background? Where are they coming from? Why might they be saying this? It's good to know the differences at least good to know the differences so that you can make the most educated decision on whether or not you're going to believe them or not it's something i thoroughly enjoy doing is kind of diving into someone's credentials and looking into them a little bit more and that goes for dietitians as well sometimes sometimes you like looking a little bit deeper and they like why would they say something like that but it's interesting so the more you know the biggest thing is honestly, the misinformation out there can be incredibly harmful. So I just wanna make sure you're protecting yourselves, you're protecting your loved ones. If you hear something, ask about the source. At the end of the day, you just gotta make the decision that's best fit for you. A little critical thinking, especially when it comes to the internet, never hurt anyone. Thanks for listening to today, guys. A fun dietitian versus nutritionist episode about what the differences are. We have an entire episode on the Uppy Dietitians podcast about it where we go into it a little bit more. I'll tag the podcast in the description. Otherwise, I need to stop doing peace signs. I do peace signs at the end of, I think, like every single video. I need to chill out. Stay safe, stay educated, and I'll see you next week.